organizational resilience, the ability of an organization to anticipate, prepare for, respond, and adapt to incremental change and sudden disruptions in order to survive and prosper. As a chief executive of a company myself, I think about not just the short-term but the long-term prospects of a business. So when BSI's best practice and organisation resilience landed on my desk recently, it was really intriguing and it really captured my attention because it spoke to both of those time agendas, short and long-term. We wanted to delve further into this topic to understand it better and we commissioned Professor David Denyer at Cranfield University to gather the evidence going back over 50 years from what other organisations are saying about the topic. The report identifies that the thinking on organisational resilience has evolved over five distinct phases. The first phase was very much about stopping bad things happening. It was about preventative control. It was about having systems and processes in place. That then moved on to an agenda which was very much about having people who were alert, attentive, careful, mindful of what they were doing in order to avoid, trap and mitigate problems. The next phase of organisational resilience thinking was very much about a progressive agenda. And there are two aspects to that. The first aspect is around performance uh, optimization, which is about doing what the organisation does so it's existing technologies, it's existing markets, existing processes, but doing that much better. That's opposed to the fourth phase of resilience thinking, which was very much about the organisation doing something radically different. So to be the disruption in its marketplace, that requires adaptive innovation. But the fifth phase, which we're calling paradoxical thinking, is about blending the four former phases into a more holistic and blended fit-for-purpose approach for the particular context that that organisation faces. Within those five perspectives on organisational resilience, we find two core drivers and two core approaches that organisations can adopt. The first driver is a defensive agenda, which is about stopping bad things happening, as opposed to a progressive agenda, which is about making things happen in the organisation. In terms of approach, what we find is some organisations drive for resilience by trying to, to strive for consistency. That's opposed to a flexible agenda, which is having people that have a variety of different ideas, a variety of different beliefs and outlooks, and a variety of different behaviours and practices, which enables them to be much more agile. Now that creates four core quadrants. In the bottom left, we have the preventative control. That's about defensive agenda by being very consistent. So this is about putting defences in depth it's about stopping bad things happening. This is opposed to the bottom right hand quadrant which is about mindful action. And this is having people who notice the problems in their environment. They're able to raise those concerns and those concerns are listened to. And they're empowered to act, to take action, to stop the problem cascading and escalating through the system. Now in the progressive agenda, this is about making things happen. The top left hand box is about performance optimization. This is about the organization doing what it does now, but doing it better to drive competitive advantage. Now this box is opposed to the top right hand box, which is very much about adaptive innovation. This is about being the disruption in the marketplace. No singular approach to organisational resilience actually achieves performance in the longer term. It's actually a blend of these different approaches. The challenge for organisations is that there are tensions between the different quadrants. For example, when an organisation feels a threat, it tends to retreat into the bottom left-hand box, which is about preventative control. So it puts more systems and processes in place, it controls resources and it controls its people even more, which drives out the flexibility and the agility that it needs to perform well in a dynamic and changing environment. We also propose a new methodology, which is about how you achieve organisational resilience. And this builds on the two aspects of approach within the tensions model, the one on consistency and the one on flexibility. Now, existing approaches of plan, do, check and act, which many organisations know and have used, fits really well in terms of the consistency agenda. 
what we're proposing is the foresight methodology to drive the flexibility agenda. The foresight methodology has four aspects to it. The first aspect is foresight. Foresight's about anticipating the threats and opportunities that your organization will face in the future. Insight is about understanding the present conditions of the organization, what the situation is and how people are acting. Oversight's about measuring and monitoring the system and having the checks and balances in place. And hindsight is about learning and learning from experience. The foresight model is particularly useful for organisations that are operating in more volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous environments. Organisations need to be both consistent and flexible. That requires a blending of the plan, do, check, act methodology and the foresight methodology. This really requires a shift of thinking from either or to both and and that requires paradoxical thinking. The key finding of the report is that all organisations have an approach to organisational resilience that they think is effective. What this report identifies is that actually there are four completely contrasting and distinct approaches to organisational resilience and that there's no one size fits all. And actually, if you're preoccupied with one particular perspective on organisational resilience, that probably means there's some blind spots and some weaknesses that you're not identifying. I've gained valuable personal insights into this topic from reading Professor Denier's report and I'd encourage everyone to read the full report to truly understand for any organisation the benefits that organisation resilience can build for them not just today but in the future. Mm -hmm.